Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Welcome to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. I'm Stephen Newmark, Director of Policy at the Global Healthy Living Foundation. And I'm Zoe Rothblatt, Associate Director of Community Outreach at GHLF. Our goal is to help you understand what's happening in the healthcare world to help you make informed decisions to live your best life. Today's episode is part of a special three-part series focusing on polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR. Over the course of these episodes, we will speak with a physician and a patient who deals with PMR in their daily lives so that we can get a better understanding of PMR and the journey that patients go on to find treatment. And today, we're very excited to speak with a longtime friend of our organization and incredible advocate for patients and physician, Dr. Grace Wright. Welcome, Dr. Wright. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so delighted to be here. Do you want to start by introducing yourself to our audience? Sure. So I am a consultant rheumatologist in New York City, and I see patients across the spectrum, trained in New York, actually, at uh, the NYU School of Medicine and served as clinical associate professor of medicine there and really spend my time now in my practice, as well as leading the amazing organization, the Association of Women in Rheumatology, in which we help fight for the rights of our physicians and our patients and educate our across the spectrum about our diseases and the importance of equity in the management of rheumatic diseases. Well, thank you, Dr. Wright, for all you do and for joining us today to help us better understand polymyalgia rheumatica. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. So let's begin. Dr. Wright, thank you again for joining us. So why don't we begin with the basics? What exactly is PMR and how is it different from other types of arthritis? So as the name polymyalgia implies, this is a disease in which there is stiffness and achiness as people perceive it in their muscles. But the important muscles are in the shoulder area and in the hip area. So you may feel pain and stiffness that's in the neck, the shoulders, the upper arms, or in the hip and the thighs as well. And most often, this can be something that sort of gradually builds. But for some people, they get up one day and they're stiff. The things that make you aware of what that stiffness is, is you have difficulty getting up out of a chair. You find yourself using your arms to push up because your hip is so sore or raising your arms up to brush your teeth, you know, get some food, brush your hair. So it's the sort of thing that if you don't really think about it, you don't realize it's happening until you walk in sort of with this, oh my gosh, I have so much difficulty. I need to stretch and I'm in pain all the time. So a quick follow-up, is PMR curable or is it chronic? So PMR can be managed quite effectively. And for many people, we can treat them, get rid of symptoms, get them off medicines, and they go along uh, quite happily. Others may need to be on a longer course of medicine. In fact, this disease tends to occur in the later ages, so in late 60s and 70s. And we say if you're younger than 50, then we should think of something else. But this is a disease that typically is seen in 50 years and older. So we have to think of other things that this could be. Is this osteoarthritis? Is this uh, uh, something that's affecting the spine and causing pinched nerves? A variety of things, but really, that's really how that starts and how we manage it. Can you tell us a little bit more about that diagnosis process? And is it easy to diagnose someone with PMR? You're saying it could mimic some other conditions, perhaps. And yeah, tell us how easy or difficult and what kind of things you look for. Yeah. So, you know, typically a person would present to their primary care provider saying, I have pain or stiffness in my hips or my neck. And that is such a general uh, complaint that often the first thought is this person has arthritis or a pinched nerve. And so they go down that path. Things that make it a little clearer for us are when we look at the blood test and we see, for instance, that the blood count may be low. So the red cell count or the hemoglobin or hematocrit, those are all measures of the same thing, that there's a mild anemia or that the things that we use to measure inflammation in blood, such as the sedimentation rate and the C-reactive protein, two other blood tests, those can be quite high. And so when we look at the high inflammatory markers, sed rate and CRP, a mild anemia and the complaints, then polymyalgia rheumatic rises to the top of that diagnosis. But just saying the complaints doesn't often make it clear because many other things can sound the same but present quite differently when you look at the blood work. And have you noticed any shortcomings in the diagnosis process or the treatment process when it comes to polymyalgia rheumatica? 
Yeah. So one of the biggest issues we have is that there's a huge delay between when that person feels the first symptoms and when they get to a rheumatologist to get proper treatment. Because for rheumatology, this is how we think, right? We put PMR kind of much higher on the list of things that we're thinking about. But a primary care provider may really sort of believe this is arthritis of the spine. And for some patients, if it's not so clearly localized, we start to think, well, maybe it's rheumatoid arthritis because that can give you pain in shoulder shoulders and pain in, in the hips, but that tends to involve hands and feet as well. There's another area of diagnoses in which this can evolve called vasculitis, where the inflammation is actually in the blood vessels. And there are, in fact, some people who start off as PMR and evolve into giant cell arteritis, one of these kinds of vasculitity. So there may be quite a length of time between when you first feel symptoms and we come up with the right name. And that's time that we want to shorten so that you can get on treatment much more quickly. Um, moving over to prevalence, how prevalent is PMR compared to other types of arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, axial spondyl arthritis? Yeah, so that's a great question. If we do an age cut and say if we're looking at the 60 and 70 year old, it is probably the most common of our inflammatory arthritis. Mm. You know, because it, that's where it is. It's really in the above 50. Whereas rheumatoid, you'll see many 20s and 30s and 40s and even um, some teenagers and children with rheumatoid arthritis. So if you look at that age group and you say there's inflammatory arthritis that is just starting, PRMR should be the top of the list. You know, because it's about 750,000 people in the U.S., about two thirds of who are women and one third men. It's a little bit more prominent in women a bit more prominent in people of Caucasian descent. But again, it has not really been looked at in those of other descents, such as Asian and African ancestry. So we may be underreporting in that group. But again, it is not an uncommon or rare disease in an older group of people. And Dr. Ray, as someone who treats PMR patients, what's your biggest advice for people who are seeking help for PMR? You mentioned there's a big gap in time to diagnosis. Maybe what are some things that patients should bring up with their doctor if they're experiencing and how can they ease their pain in everyday life? Yeah, sure. So there are definitely strategies that the patient can do, but there are lots of things that we can do with healthcare providers. And I think the most important thing always in rheumatology is to remember the story is the most critical. So I want to know, when did you have this? When does it bother you uh, the most? Is it when you get up in the morning that you're stiff? How are you functioning in your daily things? The part that's a little deceptive is we accommodate around our pain and dysfunction. Right. So you find yourself doing things differently. You say, well, no, my shoulders work. I'm like, but you can't get it above your head. Well, then I just lift my whole body up or I put things on a lower shelf. It doesn't make it go away. It's just that we've learned to sort of work around it. So it's really important to think about, have I changed the way I function in order to function? That becomes a key clue to me that there's something wrong, mm. that my hips are stiffer, that my hips hurt. Am I doing fewer walks? Am I not taking the train or walking upstairs because I'm avoiding pain? Not just saying, well, I don't have pain because I've figured out how to deal with it. That's just having the disease control you, not you controlling yourself and living outside of that. So it's important to really sort of think through that particular thing because we hide things from ourselves. And, and then think, you know, am I more fatigued? Because fatigue comes with this so that I can come in with a list of carefully thought out things. Now, if somebody mentions that they think you have PMR, ask to see a rheumatologist because we are a lot faster at honing to this diagnosis compared to all of the others that it could be. What I really don't like to see is somebody who's 60 years old sort of popping a lot of non-steroidals, over-the-counter pain medicines because those come with the risks and they don't actually get rid of the disease. So we have mm. much more effective therapies to do that. And this way we can shorten the time on drug, shorten the amount of time you're suffering and get you to a more effective path of treatment. Well, yeah, that, that kind of resonated with me. I know you didn't say it like this, but sort of covering up an injury or an ache and, and just compensating in different ways and right. instead of actually addressing the need. I think that's really important for folks to understand that those things can be addressed rather than worked around. And in fact, you know, this entire conversation has really been enlightening and helpful. One final question, Dr. Wright, before we wrap up, what resources are currently out there that can help patients cope with the physical and mental challenges of living with PMR? 
Well, for certain, there are lots of resources in the patient space and in the physician space, right? So going to the American College of Rheumatology, they have patient, the material for what the symptoms are and how this treated. Global Health and Living Foundation has lots of resources to help just think through not every pain is the same pain, not every pain is the same diagnosis. Arthritis Foundation also has uh, important resources. But I think really speaking with your doctor, with your healthcare provider to say, is this something that is appropriate for my age or not so that we can get you? Because there really are lots of things that we can do so that you're not just living with the disease, you're actually conquering the disease, right? For me, the way that I like to approach is how do I get rid of this so that I could get on with life different from how do I sort of live with this and modify my life around it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're hopeful that podcasts like this and other resources that we put out and and others that you'd mentioned will add to help benefit patients moving forward. And we thank you again for joining us. We learned a lot, and I'm sure our listeners did too. Before you go, is there anything you'd like to discuss while you're here today? Sure. Just to say that, you know, one of our focuses with AWARE, or the, we're using acronyms, right? The Association of Women (laughs) in Technology, right? So we do a lot of work to really drive the importance of equity and advocacy for all patients. I mentioned that sometimes we underestimate prevalence of disease because nobody's looking at a certain population of patients. So when we look at our patients of Latin ancestry, of African ancestry, we're not actually asking these questions and sometimes these diseases go unrecognized. So be a part of the community in which we're researching and asking and AWARE is doing a lot to try and get clinical trials and research to people who are actually suffering from these diseases so that we can make sure that we're asking the right questions and that we're creating the right therapies that will work for everyone, where they come from or what their ancestry is. So check us out. We're really happy to partner with uh, Global Healthy on a variety of these initiatives because equity matters. Yeah, absolutely. It's certainly a topic that we've discussed a lot and we've spoken a little bit about AWARE as well on this podcast. And so our listeners hopefully will know the great work that you guys are doing already. Thank you so much for joining us today and for helping break down PMR. I know while there are a lot of resources out there, there's still more conversation to be had and we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Well, Zoe, that was a great conversation I thought we had with Dr. Wright. And I know I certainly learned a bit about PMR and hopefully we can educate some people about this disease. And I really like her tips for patients to pay attention to about your pains and how you're interacting in daily life. Really great stuff there. Totally. Yeah, that definitely hit home. And the idea of compensating in other ways is, I I guess, a little bit of a band-aid, if you will, but you really got to address the underlying issue. And yeah, just by recognizing your symptoms is like a part of advocacy for yourself. And then, you know, going to your doctor and talking about it is a really big step and just encourage everyone to advocate for themselves in that way. Definitely. Well, we hope that you uh, took something from this podcast as well. And before we go, we definitely want to encourage everyone to check out all of our podcasts at ghlf.org slash listen. Well, everyone, thanks for listening to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. If you like this episode, please give us a rating and write a review on Apple Podcasts and definitely hit that subscribe button wherever you listen. I'm Zoe Rothblatt. I'm Stephen Newmark. We'll see you next time. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.